All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know it's about that time. It might be Labor Day weekend, but on Sportswire Radio, we aren't stopping, we aren't vacationing, and for good reasons, because our favorite dear friends over at Wrestling Championship Entertainment have given us two of the biggest stars right now. And I would say, after watching Blaze of Glory, day one, maybe two of the most important, two of the most deadly superstars of all of course as usual we're joined by our reigning defending universal grand slam wisconsinite champion craven rage craven two belts now and he certainly made mincemeat out of tyler arc we'll definitely get into that for sure in a few minutes and join for the first time ladies and gentlemen if you're watching him right now for the first time he reminds me of one of those guys i would watch in a biker movie or a tough guy movie one of those just guys you wouldn't want to see in the street, you'd want to go the other way, and that is JDT. And I'm going to tell you why here very shortly, and for some good reasons. He is coming off a huge, huge victory here in that strap match, which pretty much kicked things off against Kodak Kid, and he made mitts me to him as well. We'll get into all of that here. So, with him, Father Ado here, I'm the Sponsor Bob. The- Pro wrestling stars here from Wrestling Championship Entertainment. That's JDT and the reigning, defending, Universal Grand Slam Wisconsinite champion. That is Craven. Rage, gentlemen, how are you? No, too bad, Reverend. How about yourself? Uh, I'm hanging in here. Hopefully, uh, I don't uh, join the fate of the likes of Tyler Ark and Kodak Kid here over the next hour. So hopefully, I'll be on my best behavior. And congratulations, guys, on the huge victories here. And I'll come to JDT in a second. But Craven Rage, you are certainly the rage of wrestling championship entertainment because once again, you certainly made an example of Tyler Ark. And at the end of the show, we saw pretty much that build up to that cliffhanger. Of Blaze of Glory ne- Day 2 next week with Sean Jovi, the resident rock star, and set the tables for us on how everything unfolded and why you are still standing once again as our reigning, defending, universal Grand Slam Wisconsinite champion. Like I told you before, Reverend, I'm the coach of this business. I'm the greatest of all time. I go out there and I make actual facts come true. I tell people they're going to fall to me, and that's what they do. So I'm the best in this business. I'm at the top of the mountain. I'm carrying the richest prize in this industry. And no one's on my level. I'm on a whole different new level now these days. That's why at the end, and I know Sean Joby wanted me to step in that ring, but it was not the time. The time will be September 10th when I put his wannabe rock star as two, three doors. I'm going to destroy him, smash him, and I'm just going to beat him. And he's going to regret thinking he's the, on the top of this mountain because I stand alone at the top of the mountain. Let me ask you a follow-up question to that because certainly Sean Jovi wanted you to come through those ropes. And, of course, his best friend, Doc Fire, was there with him. And certainly the main event unfolded, the 16th anniversary of Sean Jovi's decorated career. Gets a big victory here. But... Was that mind games that you actually played with Mr. Jovi? Because Jovi was ready. Jovi wanted you, and he wanted you badly in that ring. But you actually, a lot of people, I think, were surprised, especially in the Wrestling Championship Entertainment Universe, where you actually kind of said, you know what? All yours. And you walked away. I mean, was that mind games that you played there, champ, with the resident rock star? Oh, yeah. It was all mind games. Because, like I said, it wasn't my time. Mm. I let him have his time because it was his little anniversary. But now 
I'm going to destroy him because it's my time. And I will be standing over his broken body when I put him through three doors. Well, certainly the song from Three Doors Down, I'm a Loser, could be Sean Jovi's theme song rather than a Bon Jovi theme song. But that's here yeah, or there. His theme song will be, he could be living on his own prayer. Uh, he so, and he might be not only in a bed of roses, he might be in a bed of pain, and he might want to keep the faith there when he uh, gets in the ring there with you. So certainly uh, there, uh, Mr. Jovi will have to uh, deal with those consequences for sure. But JDT, good to be with you here. Congratulations on a big, big win. And I kind of felt in a lot of ways that the strap match that you had with Kodak Kid was the match of the night. And I spoke about that with those in the locker room that were messaging me back and forth and fans of Wrestling Championship Entertainment. And this was, I think, in a lot of ways, a statement victory for you on your behalf. And talk about that for those that are listening and watching this on Sportswire Radio about the big win last week in the strap match against Kodak Kid. Well, it's it's my signature match, and I'm not going to go out without a fight in my, my own match, my creation. This is my baby. I've had this thing brewing in my mind, and I've used this in the past so many times in a different wrestling company I worked for. And, you know, it, it's it's a brutal match. It is a brutal fight. It pushes you to the limits. It's... You, you got to be on your toes for anything and everything. I mean, it's a false count anywhere match. It's no rules. You, you basically have to survive in order to win this match. And I, I hate doing this for people, but I'm not your typical person that sits and says, I respect somebody. If I don't like you, I will tell you. And you I know, you, you look like somebody like that. You do look like somebody that uh, you would basically say that pretty much right to the person's face and then pretty much spit in their face right, right at the same time. <laughs> you, you, nailed, you nailed that one on the head with that, man. Uh, but I will say Kodak Kid is a hell of a fighter, but unfortunately he just fell too short against me. Oh, he I definitely was. Fight. Like I said, I'm not going down with the fight in that match, especially if it's something I've created. Oh, no question about that. And I still think it was an impressive win. And I've said this to other people, and I've said this to other people that even are fans and wrestlers in other companies, because we do a lot of coverage of other different wrestling promotions around the world on Sports Wire Radio, which I'm I'm sure you're aware of. And and I kind of feel like this win was impressive because – in my opinion, I would say right now, maybe not the wrestler that's got the most success, but the best pound-for-pound pound wrestler right now in terms of what they bring to the table and their overall skills for me is Kodak Kid. So for yeah. me, what you did there in that match, what you did to him, I think shows that, you know what, JDT, Kodak Kid, you know what, he might be the best worker, he might have the best skills, he might be able to have the best spots, but you know what, all that stuff is no match for JDT. And thank you. I appreciate that very much. And back to what you said before, I ain't going to put you in any pain. I'm not going to hurt you. Cause I have <laughs> I, I well, because we've had a wrestler, by the way, that was upset because I had put on wrestlers that, how can I put this? And you guys will probably chuckle. Kind of like new kids on the block. They're, they wrestled maybe five, six matches. And his name is Slugger Hampton. He's a champion also okay. like Craven Rage. And he might have some points, to be fair. He might have some points, and certainly we want to make sure when it comes to guys like yourself, we want to make sure that we don't make the same mistake that we might have made in speaking with other wrestlers who've had five, six, seven matches, and maybe, as some have pointed out, more shirts than wins in the wrestling business because you guys certainly don't have that same mistake. Well, I've actually been in the business for – been doing this for quite some time. I've – Kind of like a, kind of like a Rey Mysterio type thing. I've been doing this since I was seven. Be get wow. my butt beat by my brothers, and we basically do straight full on kick punch and just. I learned how to take a hit, and wow, 
that's that's actually taught me. You sure you're not a stunt man rather than a wrestler? Are you sure you're not a stunt man? I've thought about it. I've thought about it. (laughs) (laughs) But no, wrestling is my passion, and I no matter how old I'm gonna get, I'm still gonna want to keep doing this day in and day out, and just obviously you've seen some of my matches. Yep. I, I I do not care for a singles straight up fight. I mean, I'm looking to hurt someone. I mean, my nickname's the Punisher, so you look like one too, by the way. You, you look like the Punisher. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I do Certainly. gotta say one thing. I do gotta say one thing. I'm really loving the Buddy Repperton look that you got going on. Oh, thank Repertin. you very much. Uh, you know, you should that. actually, you know what? I'm going to get in so much trouble for saying this, but I've actually, I actually turned out a job at Macy's about a month and a half ago. Oh, geez. They wanted, <laughs> they wanted me to get rid of the hair and the mutton chops. And at mm, this point, I've had no. them for so long. I can't do it. No, listen, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. So trust me. I mean, and, and I spoke oh. with another, an anonymous wrestler in England who I won't say his name because it'll come back to him. He actually said that in England he considers me the Ryan Seacrest of professional oh, wrestling. Nice. <laughs> so I can't I can't get rid of it. So I'm gonna yep. definitely keep it, and I I appreciate those kind words, and You're we'll welcome. definitely come we'll definitely come back to you in a second. But you know, Craven Rage, I find it fascinating because you know we spoke about the big win that you had. We spoke about obviously Sean Jovi, but you know last I had checked. You had definitely spoke to Mr. JDT about uh, putting a hurting on Mr. Kodak. Because we had Kodak on a couple weeks ago, which I know both gentlemen of you guys got a chance to check out that. At least some of the footage I had posted from some of the clips. And Kodak was coming for Craven Rage. And Craven, I mean, how did you feel that JDT did in terms of putting that hurting on uh, the Kodak kid? The picture of perfection. Well, JDT, like I told Last time I was on your show, I made him a proposition. I told him to mm-hmm. take to go out there, handle his business, take him out because I've been carrying this company on my back, but Kodak is still still chasing after me, still coming after me, still trying to take something that I pretty much worked for, which is Hey, you look more impressive right now than Roman Reigns. I mean, Roman Reigns needs his family to help him keep the title. You don't have that problem at all. So I, I made a proposition to JDT, and he went out there. Was I impressed? Hmm? Not really. Wait. What do you mean? What I mean by that, he didn't take him out. I wanted I wanted him to end his career. But he did. He just went out there, beat his ass, bravo, bravo, but he truly didn't live up to the expectations like I wanted to. Hmm. You know. Hmm. So interesting. JDT, you know, after digesting that, because I'm almost speechless, because, I mean, you did put a beating on Kodak Kid, and it looked like you were going to end his life, literally, and I'm, I'm still not even sure how he was able to go out in, in that open challenge against uh, James Marshall, our interstate openweight champion. But after hearing Craven Rage's words here, I mean, how does that make you feel? Well, I'm sorry, Craven, but that's... That's a slap in the face. I did what I needed to do for you and James. Yeah, I may not have gotten my job done, but you only pay me to beat people up and hurt them. I hurt him, and I know you said to take him out and end his career. I'm sorry to tell you. I may hurt people, but I'm not someone to work for their career yeah do i want to get them out of the way and have me move up the ranks yeah i do i just 
I'm not going to end someone's career for someone. I'll end a career when I feel like I'm going to end a career. Hmm. Now, I got one thing to say since you want to talk about this proposition that you made to me. How about I make you a proposition? How about, since you're the ruler of the yard, why don't you start taking care of your own yard instead of having me do your grunt work? Otherwise, someone's going to have a new landlord of the yard. Ooh. Oof. I mean, oof. Careful, dirty thing. Careful. I have to say careful because you have to remember one thing. I'm the ruler of this yard. Me and James Marshall carry this company on our backs. Yeah, and every step of the way, I'm always there to help you guys behind. So I'm carrying the heavy load, which is the stuff that's always behind you guys. That isn't that important to you. I mean, since you like to run away from Kodak, why not face him like a man? I have faced Kodak. I, I, I know. But and I have destroyed him each time that I stepped into that ring. But you know, maybe you're right. Maybe it's time for me to get rid of the loose ends of this little thing that we have got going on. Man, the only way you're really going to end, truly end it is you do it yourself. I mean, hmm. I will. I could I could be there in your corner, but not not unless I'm not unless I'm given more more le- more more not gifts, but basically leeway, I guess you can say or However you want to put it. Well, uh, I got that JD, JDT. JDT is a paid man. JDT is not a workhorse. I mean, I work for it, but I'm not. I'm I'm not this bodyguard or whatever, unless I'm paid. But again. I'm not going to keep going back and fighting your guys' fights. So are you saying, JDT, that you're not necessarily loyal to Craven Rage, but you're more or less loyal to the almighty dollar? Is that what I kind of just heard here correctly on Sports Boy Radio? Basically, since day one, Reverend, mm-hmm. I'm a paid mercenary. Mm. But... Mm. If I'm not going to keep getting what I'm owed, the mercenary will turn back and do what he feels is necessary. Hmm. Um, I almost hate to ask before I bring back in here Craven Rage, but what would that be that you would do necessarily if you, you don't get what you would want? Well... Let's put it this way. It's like the old saying goes. You keep a dog starved for days. He does tend to turn on the master. Hmm. And I am a vicious, vicious, wild dog when I'm not given what is needed. Oh, JDT, JDT, be careful what you wish for. Because <laughs> you're talking about you might be that dog to turn on your master. 
are warning you to turn on your rule of the yard. You might find yourself put down like old yellow. You know, Craven Rage, I got to ask you this question here because I'm noticing a couple different things here. The first thing is obviously JDT, the proposition we heard last time he came on the air. And JDT did beat Kodak Kid. He didn't end his career, but he did get a victory. We saw right now this whole thing, how the end of Blaze of Glory day one unfolded with you and Sean Jovi. You left the ring. You've got, it seems to me right now, a lot of different open ends. You've got Sean Jovi. You've got Kodak Kid. You've got even Dash Andrews lurking around because he's still got that golden ticket. And now it seems to me we've got this sort of, I don't know if it's tension. I don't know if it's different ideas of where we go here with JDT. But it seems to me, Craven Rage, for the first time in a little while here, in wrestling championship entertainment, there is a point what JDT has to say in that you might be the ruler of the yard, but there seems to be some open ends right now in the yard, and, and you might have to attend to those. I, like this. I became on top without no one's help. And I have carried a company all the way through. Every point that I face, I destroy and smash. Yeah, I have had JDT be by my side. He has came through when he's told to come through. And yes, I did make a proposition, but at the end of the day, I run this yard. And I'm the ruler of this yard. I'm the goat. And there is no one man or anybody alive that can knock me off the top of this mountain because I'm carrying the top prize of this company. One of the richest prizes of this company is that the Universal Grand Slam Championship. Well, it certainly seems like it is one of the richest prizes in all of professional wrestling and certainly Craven Rage has done a phenomenal job in holding those titles, and certainly he has needed less help than an individual named Roman Reigns, who's also holding two titles, and he has needed his family to continue to keep him as the champion and the ruler in the WWE. But we are here right now on Sportswire Radio Live with JDT and also Craven Rage, the aforementioned reigning, defending, universal Grand Slam Wisconsin I champion. And I am the host of the Sports Report and the station manager here of Sportswire Radio. The Reverend Tom Bryce. And if you do like what you hear from us on Sportswire Radio, do give us a like on Facebook at Sportswire Radio in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You can listen to all of our great content on sportnarium.com slash player. And of course, make sure you go over to WCE Heat. Dot com for all information related to Wrestling Championship Entertainment. You can also go on Facebook and follow Wrestling Championship Entertainment by WCE Heat on Facebook. That's at WCE Heat. On Facebook, WCEHeat.com. Also, subscribe to the YouTube page of Wrestling Championship Entertainment, where you can watch shows like Red, White, and Brews, Spirit in the Sky, Blaze of Glory Day One, where Craven Rage was successful, JDT was successful, and also next weekend, Blaze of Glory Day Two, where we are going to see the 30 minute Iron Man match between. Nicholas Krenson and the reigning defending interstate openweight champion, James Marshall. And, of course, for that Universal Grand Slam Wisconsin Night Championship, we will see the resident rock star, Sean Jove, who just celebrated his 16th anniversary in the ring against the champion, Craven Rage. So please make sure you support our friends over at Wrestling Championship Entertainment. Also want to thank everybody at Wrestling Championship Entertainment because now they plug Sportswire Radio on all upcoming shows. So please make sure you support our friends at Wrestling Championship Entertainment enough. Cannot thank them for enough for everything that they do for us here in Sportswire Radio, everything that they do for professional wrestling. Clearly, people are talking to me about Clash at the Castle. They were talking about All Out. All I could think about right now was Blaze of Glory Day 1 and Day 2. So forget about AEW. Forget about WWE. The premier companies right now around the world, 
is the company we have right here now that is Wrestling Championship Entertainment with Craven Rage and JDT. I'll come back to this whole dynamic here with both of you guys in a second. But, you know, JDT, I always like to ask this question for those that are here for the first time on Sports Wire Radio. And what got you into wrestling? Well, all thanks to my uh, older brother, Greg. He uh, always watched wrestling and... Our mom absolutely hated it. <laughs> she was not a big fan of wrestling. She uh, always told us, like, you're going to get really violent. You're going to keep watching that stuff. And it's going to rot your brain, this and that, you know. But, you know, we'd always sneak in and watch with him. And, at, man, even, even watching, like, that back in the day, that, like, it just got me so hooked. Like, I wanted to do that. That's what I want to be. That's what I would love to just go and experience all of that, what they do. And just, man, it's, it is a, it's very, very exciting. Every time you go out, you don't know what to expect. It's just that that's what I love about wrestling. You just, you just love it no matter what. Oh, absolutely. No question about it. To me, professional wrestling, and I always say this to people, to me, there is nothing like it. And I still get excited. It doesn't matter what I'm watching at this point. I mean, I I, uh, pretty much at this point, all I watch right now really is wrestling. I mean, people ask me all the time whether it's wrestlers giving me their footage or you guys or some of the other companies that we're very blessed to do work with. To me, my life is wrestling. In fact, the, the running line I have now at this point, people ask, well, what's in your wardrobe? It's, well, wrestling shirts because pretty much 90% <laughs> of what I wear these days are wrestling shirts. So that's great stuff there. And Tim Franklin says here, welcome WCE to Sports Wire Radio. So certainly uh, I appreciate that. He also says, evening Tom Bryce, you the man. I appreciate that here. So certainly this individual might know an individual that might partake in things here in wrestling championship entertainment. So we certainly appreciate that as well. And the rest of the locker room for their support. I mean, Craven, I, I want to come back to you because I want to talk about the Sean Jovi match in a second. Cause obviously it is a match that everybody is talking about. I mean, I did feel that in some ways it's a different Sean Jovi than even the last time you saw him in the ring. And, I felt that in watching the match with Dark Fire, and Dark Fire certainly was on another level, and certainly I think he raised the game of Sean Jovi. Are you concerned in any way that Sean Jovi might have a little bit of momentum going into this match? Sean Jovi got a lot of momentum going into this match. You know, yeah, is he on a different new level when the first time we face each other? I can say he is, you know. Over the course of time, I have been watching Sean Joby every match, every show that we have put on. I have sit back and I've watched him over and over, and I'm studying him. I've been studying him from day one. You know, I was hoping that Crown and Team it would be me and Sean Joby kick it off, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. But over the time, I knew this day was going to come. And I've been waiting, waiting to unleash all my punishment, all my pain, all my suffering. Just unleash that rage upon him because I knew going into this, my whole goal was to go back. I went back to the last show at Fight or Fight that we had that's coming up, Mm -hmm. that's coming up. And when he defeated me, he finally he finally overcame his fear. But he unleashed something, which was a rage, and it filled up and up. So when I came in, I came in calling my shot, what I wanted to do with my legacy, and I have done that. And I have raised this bar so high. That now, what now? It's time for him to pay the piper. Hmm. Well, we'll certainly find out here. I have another comment in here, and this individual says, "Good show." And is that a A W icon there? I mean, I, I kind of might know who the individual may know somebody who looks like, but I was just trying to 
read out there what the icon. If you want to explain what the uh, icon is in the AW wrestling, I would definitely appreciate that. But you know, JDT, I noticed something at the end of your win on Kodak Kid, and I noticed you had a chair there with another victim on there, Nicholas Crenson. And now we're up to two victims of that chair, because certainly the chair was a big part of the victory over Kodak Kid here. And I mean, walk me through now who could be the next potential victim? Because I see two victims on that chair. So I'm assuming that we're going to have more victims here. Well, I will say that there is a lot of space on that chair. So that is up to who wants to, I guess you can say, get in my way. I'm that, that chair it's just like a 24-hour convenience center. It's open for everyone. <laughs> so that chair needs to consume. It needs to consume hmm. heads, backs, arms, legs, whatever. But like I said at the end of that match, at, everybody's name's going to be on that chair eventually sooner or later. Hmm. And, and it's, uh, not, it's not a... It's not a shot at anybody, but like I said, that chair has got a lot of space yet, and my hand ain't going to cramp anytime soon writing down names. Well, uh, I would imagine, because I did notice that that chair had plenty of space, and certainly uh, I would imagine there will be names coming up here in the near and distant future, because we do have a couple of more shows left here in the season for Wrestling Championship Entertainment. And before I, I, I get to a couple of other comments, I had to ask you, And I mean, what was that like going into a tree? Because I noticed that you and Kodak Kid were fighting on the outside. And like one of the things I'm saying, is because I watch a lot of wrestling, right? I yeah. cover a lot of wrestlers. I cover a lot of companies. And I hadn't seen that before necessarily where you and Kodak were – battling on the outside and you guys were certainly uh using literally everything humanly possible to me it was almost like you guys were like fighting to the death literally i mean so maybe you were trying in a way to actually go to off craven's proposal but uh i mean what is that like going through a tree a tree branch i mean that uh that's gotta hurt no um you ever watch george of the jungle that's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> yes but i have seen george of the jungle yes i have at, I mean, I still have the cut marks off my arm, and it, not going to lie, it hurt. It hurt like hell. Would I do it again? Yes, I would. You look like you it, would. You look like the kind of guy that would probably do that again. It reminds me I, of... Yep. I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. I said it reminds me of... I grew up in, in Brooklyn, New York, and as kids, we used to play football on the, on the cement pavement because okay. where I grew up, we didn't have what you guys had. I mean, I have it now, but that was not till I was in, in high school. But the fact of the matter is, is in order for us to play sports, we played on cement pavement. So yeah. when we played tackle football, that's what that reminded me of. Guys all of a sudden would run up at you and all of a sudden your pants would be ripped. Your mother, My mother would yell at me and my father would yell at me and I'd have cuts all over my legs and that yep. reminded me of like that. That's the only other experience I could think of. So I mean, uh, you might be the kind of guy that must have played a lot of like tackle football on pavements and did some like uh, things that uh, they might have they said, don't try this at home, kids. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. We we would play again back to what I was saying before with me and my brothers doing that for over 20 years. We didn't have a ring. We wrestled mm -hmm. all year long, snow, okay. frozen ground. Um, we would go and do it in parks, our little wrestling thing. We jump mm -hmm. off the slides, anything we could to make our shows good. And we would actually beat the crap out of each other. Like we would seriously do that and that's just how we basically learned how to do it and yeah definitely playing tackle football um we <laughs> tackled full force again you're talking 11 year old kid getting full force tackled by a 30 year old man wow that's wow wow I can, okay i can take pain and wow i it's kind of sickening but the pain <laughs> actually is makes me feel good 
Not in a well, disgusting way, but like <laughs> it's just almost, something about it just like pumps my adrenaline so hard. Like you got to have more. You got to keep going. That's why I am a. I think there's something wrong with my head. Well, I'm going to plead the fifth right on that in. because I got plenty of things wrong with me. So I'm going to certainly <laughs> plead the fifth. But what it does remind me of, for whatever reason, there was famously a Scorpion song called No Pain, No Gain. You would definitely be the poster child of it. But I have to almost ask you before I go back to Craven Rage because I'm so curious because I've never done this even when I was a kid. What's it like wrestling on, like, ice and snow? I mean, I never would have thought that that would be possible. <laughs> so I got to ask you just because, you know, I'm a dummy and, and I'm only from New York and never tried something like that. I mean, what was that like wrestling on snow and ice and, and stuff like um, that? It felt like concrete. Like, <laughs> it, it, like when you hit it, it's it, the ground is so hard and solid. It's it's not a very it's a it's an unforgiving feeling, and you never get rid of that feeling. Like you always have it in the back of your mind. Like that's what that feels like, and that's what that felt like. And wow, even okay. uh, we got to the point where we got so crazy that. Even I messed up my own brother's back because of it. Oof. Oof. Wow. So, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's uh, Like I said, that's why I'm the Punisher. Well, you definitely look like one. Certainly, for sure, there's no question why you are the Punisher. Jason D. Thompson, as we certainly heard that during the commentary of the match with Kodak Kid, where he certainly was not the picture of perfection. You came up with another big big win there to say the least and certainly uh i'll definitely not be trying at wrestling on the snow anytime <laughs> although i've played football in the snow which didn't feel what you described when it came to uh professional wrestling here and i've got a couple yep. more comments so let me get to those here and all insane wrestling from tim franklin that was the aw okay i just for whatever reason didn't see the eye and i'm kind of looking at it like what was that and also he says here blaze of glory part two comment Certainly next weekend, September the 10th. Yep, September the 10th. Almost kind of the last couple of weekends of summer, but as I continue to say, summer is not over until yep. Wrestling Championship Entertainment concludes the season. So summer's going to go a little while longer, although I have to say here in New York, this kind of did feel like we're getting toward the end of summer. These last like two days or so, the weather has felt a little bit uh, cool, although it's supposed to heat back up, but undoubtedly it'll heat up next weekend for sure when we have Wrestling Championship Entertainment Blaze of Glory Part 2, and Craven Rage will be a big part of that. So, Craven, I want to give you the floor then, and I want to give you some thoughts and anything for your final words that you might want to say to the resident rock star, Sean Joey, because I know he'll be listening wherever he may be. Sean Toby, I hope you are prepared. You signed your death wish when you made this match, when you picked the stipulations. And I have spoke already to management. Now, management haven't really liked my actions lately. Uh, me, always constantly putting my hands on the referees. I did notice that, by the way. And I noticed that the last show, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't see you put hands on a referee at Blaze of Glory Part 1. So now, since we have officially named Mark Packer the commissioner of WCE, he has been announced as the special guest referee for this match. Wow! A bombshell here on Sportswire Radio. Wow! So, therefore, Kramer Rage cannot put his hands on the ref. Or there will be repercussions behind that. Wow. This, ladies and gentlemen, we did not see this coming. And to recap here, next week, Blaze of Glory Part 2, Craven Rage versus the resident rock star Sean Jovi for Craven Rage's Universal Grand Slam Wisconsinite Championship. The special referee 
will be now general manager Mark Packer. So to make sure everything is fair, everything is down the line, Mark Packer is the referee. This is a game changer here. Certainly, if you aren't following Wrestling Championship Entertainment, you need to right now off that. You need to be on Facebook at WCE Heat so you can follow and like the page. Also, Wrestling Championship Entertainment on YouTube and also WCE Heat. Dot com for more information where you can get roster news, you can get match history, you can get all kinds of updates for your favorite wrestlers like I always do on Wrestling Championship Entertainment. And, and I'm going to ask you guys both this question because I have a good question that came in here from Tim. And prediction, Crenson versus Marshall. Is this indeed the final, I think he meant confrontation rather than uh, confrontation. So I'm going to do the uh, honors here and say the final confrontation. And I'm going to go at you first, JDT, because JDT, obviously, Nicholas Crenson has been a victim of yours because he's on that chair that you've been holding here for the past couple of months here in the company. And and I did want to ask you then, I mean, what do you think happens here between Nicholas Crenson and, of course, our reigning defending champion, the interstate open weight champ, James Marshall, and the 30-minute Ironman match? I mean, Marshall has said he's going on the record that uh, he's going to shut out Crenson, and Crenson has basically said he had a psycho wolf that... Uh, He's going to find a way, and he's training like there's no tomorrow. And we saw what happened at Blaze of Glory Part 1, where the open challenge of James Marshall and, of course, Nicholas Crenson uh, pulled a fast one on him. And uh, maybe he's got a game plan for sure. But what do you think, JDT? Well, I do got to say I've had experience with both of these men in the ring. They both... Like I said, I hate doing this, but they're both phenomenal wrestlers. No doubt about it. They can put up a hell of a fight. They they do not know the meaning of the word quit. That is a... Everybody will agree with that. They are... They are, to me... Besides myself, they are like the, I'd say, the top. Again, myself being the best, but um, <laughs> no, they, when those two go out, it is, it is a beautiful violence and I'm a sucker for violence, but <laughs> Will this be the end? And will James Marshall shut this down and be done with it once and for all? This is not me turning a leaf, but I think Crenson might get this one. Wow. I think I mean, okay. it's not. It's. You have to understand how people work. And James may have had a lot of success, but things like that do come to an end. And I think Crenson might have his number. All Just right. honest opinion. Well, I'll tell you what. He certainly did pull a fast one on him at part one. So I would say he might be playing mind games, and there's certainly their history speaks for itself. I mean, for you, Craven, I mean, what do you think? Obviously, you know both these guys very well. And, I mean, who do you think comes away and wins the Iron Man match next week? Honestly, both, both, of, those, both of those individuals are – Great reference. You know, I I have seen both of them work over the years together and both of them go hard. Both of them like JDT said, is the beautiful arc of violence that these guys when they step in the ring, they go all out. And but 30 minutes Iron Man match that's something that 
I gonna say it's gonna be beautiful. And honest opinion, my prediction it's got to be James Marshall because the reason why he's on hands and you seen it you seen him you seen how he just went through I'll tell you what he went through four opponents and two of them he won in what like a minute total I think it was dark dark fire and what Tyler Ark I think he beat him in what 40 no, seconds it, it was dark fire he just Smash real quick. Who know. was on fire thinking? That was and my so, first thought. Like he's got a match with Sean Joe. <laughs> what the hell were you thinking? And then Ad Adonis Williams came in. Yep. Um, yep. And he went through him. You know, <laughs> that, that gave him a little run for a little bit, but unfortunately he failed as usual. Well, I think Dash gave him a match. No, Dash definitely. You know. Dash gave him some moments there. He was a little and wobbly at times. Even though Cody took a beating from JDT, he still went out there just to try to get gold. And he failed as well. Now he you fell know? too. He, I mean, he didn't, you know, he wasn't as bad as Dark Fire and, and uh, Adonis, but uh, certainly uh, he didn't last there too long because, uh, well, JDT gave him a beating. I was even surprised when I was watching it on Thursday, Thursday night. I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Didn't he just like, I thought he wasn't getting back up and he got up and uh, that's why he didn't last too long there. So, yeah, I will give you that, Craven. Marshall has had four consecutive wins in that open challenge and certainly uh, they were all impressive wins. And although Crenson might have pulled a fast one on him, the Iron Man match, what I still go back to, is Marshall said he's pitching a shutout on Crenson. That's very hard to do in an Iron Man match. I, I agree, Reverend. That is hard to do. But that I is hard think, to do. But I know James. I know James Marshall, and he's going to try his best to piss that shutout. He's going to work his ass off to piss that shutout. Well, I'll tell you what. If he gets the first pinfall early on, Crenson's in trouble. I think that if he gets that first pinfall within the first six or seven minutes, he very well is going to have the firm advantage. Because, like you said, at that point, all he's got to do is play defense. It almost becomes like a soccer game for our England fans, basically. All he's got to do is keep the ball away and keep himself away from anything stupid from Crenson. And that's why I, I was kind of shocked to see Cody Walter. Because the, the beat that JDT put on him, yeah, he did my... He, he, JDT, I gotta give him credit. He took he took care of his business. He beat him up. He got paid for that. That's what he get paid for to beat people up. But I wasn't impressed because the reason why I wasn't impressed was because Kodak was still after me at times. He came after James. But James did win, though. But James win. It basically, you could say that JDT did rough him up. As they would say, he fattened him up. And basically, uh, Marshall was able to uh, nudge him over and get that one, two, three. I mean, he's still standing, yeah. Marshall. But I told you, like I said, I gave him a proposition to finish for that kid. Well, but hopefully, I... hopefully once JDT... And I get around each other. Maybe we can work something out. Maybe I give him a different proposition. A different because, proposition? Did I just hear that straight? Yeah. Because, you know, Blade the Glory coming up, part two. Yep. There's going to be a number one contender spot coming up. I don't know who's all in the match just yet. But. Maybe, maybe, hopefully, there might be a spot for JDT. Maybe. I'm just saying that maybe. I still have to talk to management about that. Because like I said, I'm the ruler of yours, so I run this camp. But I don't run management. Management does their own thing. So I, I can't 
expose a lot of information out there just yet. Just because. Finally, now, listen, as I always tell anybody that comes on, don't tip your hand if you don't have to. If you don't have to say it, don't say it because there'll oh, always be somebody. I'm not going to say it just because, like I said, it might be a number one contender spot for this, you know, at Blaze of Glory Part 2. Hopefully it is because I would love to see who the opponent is because, like mm -hmm. I said, what I'm going to do to Sean Jovi, people will know why they fear and why they know I'm the goat because I'm going to smash him so bad that he's not, he's not going to be that rock star everybody be cheering for, everybody love, everybody care about. They're going to be praying that he is still uh, he's still alive because I'm going to smash him that bad. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think this ain't a love song for Sean Jovi because clearly he ain't going to be bouncing too much here. And he might as well just want to have a nice day after what Craven Rage may do to him. So if he wants to have that nice day, he might want to rethink some of those things. But, you know, JDT, before we get to closing thoughts, I heard a couple of different things that I think that Mr. Craven Rage directed toward you. And, and before we get to closing thoughts and, and different comments, I wanted to ask your response to some of those things that Mr. Rage had may have said directed toward you. My response? Simple. Craven said it earlier. Be careful what you wish for. Ooh, ooh, ladies but, and gentlemen. Okay, go ahead. We'll see, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe me and Craven get back on the same page, and maybe this is all just a big misunderstanding. Maybe it is. Maybe I mean, you know I what? Am a, I am a is. hothead. I can be a hothead. So maybe I'm just letting this whole thing get to my head. Maybe we just need to sit down and ice this all over. So, Maybe. But we'll see. Well, in the famous words of Sammy Hagar of Van Halen in the song 5150, which Mr. Jovi might want to hear this lyric, Maybe JDT is just too crazy or is he just too high? But one way or another... He is definitely going to temporarily pacify somebody here. So that's why you need to stay tuned and follow Wrestling Championship Entertainment when it comes to Blaze of Glory Part 2 because this is going to be some card and you know there's going to be some surprises and we are going to be talking about it here throughout the week and I am going to break it here. At some point this week, we are going to have on the Psycho Wolf, Nicholas Crenson. Nicholas Crenson is coming back. He has requested the floor. He has requested a few words here. So we will see what Mr. Crenson has to say. Mr. Crenson, I know, certainly is a big topic of discussion. Will he be able to snatch that interstate openweight championship from James Marshall? I don't know. Stay tuned, but that'll be an announcement sometime here in the next day or two. And also, I want to get to a few more comments from Tim before we get out of here. Might not be the same next time. Marshall, this gentleman says Tyler Ark is here. So Tyler Ark, though, right now, uh, he might be having to wait to the back of the line like everybody else because Craven took care of him. And certainly uh, we'll see what makes of him when it comes to part two and also it does happen bring it so we'll certainly see you got this here for somebody related to jdt and craven rage we'll certainly see what happens with all of that here for sure but craven rage before i get to jdt i want to give you the floor i want to give you some closing thoughts anything you want to plug share say and certainly we are happy to be in your yard once again because you are the ruler you are the goat especially when it comes to wc and maybe of all the professional wrestling because you are holding two belts these days so i turn it over to you my friend and the floor is yours and fire away 
first and foremost, I want to thank you, Reverend, for bringing us back on here. It's been a pleasure, as always, having WCE. Thank you for the shout outs. Thank you for getting us up there, getting us, getting our word out there to us, to everybody. Thank you for all the supporters. And everybody that has been watching WCE, following us, keep following us, keep subscribing us. Go to WCEheat.com to continue watching Wrestling Championship Entertainment to see your stars like JDT, Sean, Sean Jovi, Nicholas Quinson, James Marshall, Kodak Kid, Adonis Filios, Dash Andrews, you know, Tyler Art, and the quote, Craven Wright, you know, you have to tune in to us because we, WCE, are wrestling championship entertainment. We do our, we doing our best. We keep everybody, we keep everybody safe, sound, and we put on great shows, fantastic shows, and we got the love. We got the support. We getting there. We getting our name out there. I see subscribers are up. I see followers are up. I see interest is up. People ask me in different parts of the world about wrestling championship entertainment. I've had other wrestlers talk to me and said, "You know what? I saw you speak with those guys, and I saw what you guys do with them. So there's definitely some interest out there, and and certainly uh, we love covering wrestling championship entertainment. I'm a little bummed." That we've only got two more shows left for the year. I'm I'm like really bummed because I'm just getting warmed up. And um, like I said, we are we we are the work in the process, and we're working on trying to continue on, continue growing. Want to thank our owner. She's doing a phenomenal job for making this happen for all of us, and we are just doing good. She's the best owner of WCE. Uh, best owner of maybe all of wrestling. I mean, or at least one of the best owners in wrestling. I'll tell you that much for sure. You know, these are Linda, Vince McMahon, and Tony Khan all put together in one. Oh, I agree with that. I mean, listen, Billy Corgan's got nothing on our owner, and certainly Stephanie and Triple H have nothing on them, and whoever else, Nick Khan, Tony Khan, I mean... Court Balor and MLW. I mean, uh, well, I can't say my friends in England uh, would be easy because they'll they'll kill me if I if I say the owner of WCs over those companies. But we get the point. And certainly here, I do want to thank Tim, who also gives me a nice shout out for putting this together among WC Sports Wire Radio is still number one. I appreciate that as well for the support. But JDT, I want to give you the floor, my friend. Certainly, uh, this was a very action packed debut for you here on Sports Wire Radio. So I want to give you the floor. Anything that you want to say, anything that you want to address, anybody in the back, management, certainly with part two coming up and fight or fright. And I turn it over to you, my friend, anything you want to say and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I do want to start off by saying thank you for having me on. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've started following and watching you. I do love everything and it's just, it's real awesome just getting to see you doing your thing and just you know it's it's really cool seeing that um i got to give a shout out to the boys in the back they always put on a hell of a show every single show that we do they might not like me and i might not like them but <laughs> i still got to respect the craft i still got to respect the craft for everybody um liz i got to thank her she's She's awesome, you know, giving everybody, you know, it's just giving everybody a chance, you know, it's, we all, we all love doing this. We all love busting our butts off, showing up, doing everything we can possibly do to put on the best show possible. But I do want to give a shout out to my brothers who have helped me build the kind of character I am today. And I just, I, I, I honestly, honest to God would not be what I am or who I am without their help. And just, you know, just, I can't thank them enough for helping me out and just pushing me to being the hard 
hitting beast that I am in the ring. So, but I just want to say one thing to the boys in the back. Keep eyes on the back of your head because I might just be there with the chair waiting to put your name on it. So, but that's all I got to say. Well, I'll tell you what. They don't call him the Punisher for a reason. Because certainly JDT, Jason D. Thompson is going to be somebody with that chair. It's going to be around and something tells me that there's a lot of space for somebody else in the back to get their name on it. And we know that Crenson and Kodak Kid have their names on it. And certainly if I was Tyler Ark, Adonis Felios, who knows, Dark Fire, Dash Andrews, Big Trainee. There's a long list of people. Sean Jovi. Listen, who knows? There's just, you never know who could be on that list. But I know one thing tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I learned a lot that going into Blaze of Glory Part 2, Craven Rage is going to be a very, very busy man. He basically said he's going to have a lot on his mind, and he's going to continue being the GOAT and the greatest. And JDT, something tells me here, after what I heard from Craven, I would definitely want to keep an eye on him next weekend. So certainly, we are looking forward to all of that. And if you are on Sports Wire Radio, I want to thank you, obviously, for tuning in. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, you're on LinkedIn, Twitter, I want to let you know that we'll be back on Tuesday night. Tuesday we'll be on with Jenny Hayes, the rock idol of the UK. Also had her first win in professional wrestling and nonstop action wrestling. She also has a new song that is out. So we'll talk a little music, talk some wrestling. And right afterward, we will have on the mysterious Mr. B, also another masked wrestler. And we'll speak with the mysterious Mr. B about his upcoming match in the LWF's Honor and Glory also. September the 10th, next weekend there at the Buckshaw Village Community Center. It'll be the Los Lancadores with Dis Frasada in their corner against the new team of Crossfire, our friends Wildfire Nate Reese and the Asset Stephen Cross. So I'm looking forward to that. You can follow the Mysterious Mr. B on Instagram at Mysterious Mr. B. It'll be Tuesday night through around 8 o'clock or 8.30, depending on when we get off the air with Jenny Hayes. Then Wednesday, he makes his triumphant return to Sportswire Radio. That is Mr. Sportswire himself, the lawman, Kyle Kennedy, who is six and 6-1. So I'm looking forward to speaking with the lawman. Apparently, he's going to have a match in another company called the Wrestling Appreciation Society with Travis Cox, who we had on last week. So we'll talk about that. Also, his recent appearance in Blackheart Wrestling, plus much, much more. And then Thursday... We'll be back with the natural born fighter, R.P. Davis, who's at TNT Wrestling as well. Coming up tomorrow against Shreddy for the World Championship there in Ignition TNT. And then KOW against Big Guns Joe, who was on the WWE Network several times over in progress. And one more comment for the road from Tim Franklin. Until next time, Sports Wire Radio and WCE Wrestling Championship Entertainment. Thank you. And yes, this week at some point, Nicholas Crenton, the Psycho Wolf, will be with us here. For one more final sit down, one more final words for James Marshall. Tune in for that. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of Labor Day weekend. Be safe. Be well. Go WCE. I am the host of the Sports Report, the station manager of Sports Wire Radio, the Reverend Tom Bryce. We were joined by Craven Rage, the reigning defending Universal Grand Slam Wisconsinite champion and the Punisher. Jason D. Thompson, otherwise known as JDT. You can go to WCEHeat.com for more information on Wrestling Championship Entertainment. Also, WCE on Facebook, like that page, will be Wrestling Championship Entertainment. And also, YouTube, subscribe, where you can watch Blaze of Glory Part 1, Blaze of Glory Part 2, and all past shows, past content, that's at Wrestling Championship Entertainment. Thank you, everybody. Good night. We'll be back with everyone here soon on the number one global radio station that is Sports Wire Radio.